All right, as you can see, I have, uh, hopefully you can see that, I've made the lines on the paper. Uh, there really, it wasn't too far out. You can see I've just got to trim it just a little bit here. Uh, I've got to find my scissors. I spend most of my time in this shop. It's not very big, but I spend most of my time looking for something rather than actually getting anything done. I would say that's got a lot to do with a, a poor organizational system rather than rather than the type of tools I buy because I don't think the tools hide from me. All right. That wasn't too hard. Now I have an actual square piece of paper to work with. The uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to lay this pattern out. Now keep in mind, uh, on this one, there's no coloring on either side. This one originally had a red outside. I don't know if you can see it. I think you can. And then a, a, a non-colored inside on the back. Um, that means that I'm going to have to consciously keep remembering which is the outside and inside so that I don't end up designing the holster with a, as a mirror image because that doesn't really work that well. Um, in theory, it, it, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You just turn the leather upside down, but it's harder for me to think if I'm working on it backwards. So I'm going to go ahead and, and make this uh, cover. I'm going to trace this layout right now, and then uh, I'm going to uh, add the areas where I think that it needs to be added, and I'll show you again before I make the cut. I'll be right back. I'm back. Next step, as you can see, I have laid out a uh, tracing of the small holster. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to have to take the gun and decide where I want to add leather for the new holster. It really won't be that much. It'll be maybe a half inch on each side, maybe a little bit more. Uh, I'm also, I don't know if you noticed or not, but on this pattern, this holster has a, a, a strong cant and it's actually a reverse cant because I built this holster as a, a cross draw holster for a guy. So on the uh, belt tab, I'm going to have to change the angle of the belt tab. And in doing that, I'm also going to have to, uh, to probably not only change the angle of it, but change the size a little and probably even exactly where it's centered. I'm going to have to make a few changes to accommodate the bigger gun and a gun that I want the holster to have no cant. So I'll be right back with you again. Like I said, I'm going to make a few marks on here. Then I'll show you kind of the thought process before I cut the paper. Okay, I'm back. Now, what you got here really kind of looks like a mess, but it's it's actually it's actually a step. But what I've done is I've enlarged the the basic shape about a half, maybe three quarters of an inch all the way around. And then I have laid the gun in there where the gun is going to sit. And in doing that, I've determined that I'm probably going to need to widen this about another half inch on each side. I'm going to have to add a little bit up here for my belt uh, loop just because that's that would barely be wide enough for the belt. Um, and then down on the bottom, <clears throat> because I have so much extra holster, as you can see, I'm going to have to, to shorten it based on where I want the... Um, the trigger guard on the gun. So again, what I'm going to do real fast, I think I'll just leave the camera on this. Again, it's not very precise. I'm going to need to go around with my scissors on my red line. The reason I use red after all the ink is just so I know which one to cut. I used to just leave them all ink and then uh, invariably about half the time I did that cutting the wrong places. And now, like I say, again, this this doesn't have to be perfect here because we've still got quite a bit of trimming. But you'll see when this gets, uh, gets cut out that we actually do have a somewhat holster-shaped pattern now that's a little bit easier to visualize. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold it, fold the belt loop down, and it actually does look surprisingly. I wanted to do that with the camera on so you didn't think I switched paper on you. It actually does look like a, uh, like a holster. But 
as you can see when I put the gun in it, the, uh, the holster's way too long. I'm going to turn the light on on this camera, see if that uh, maybe will help you to see in there. There's a, a good, oh, a good inch, inch and a half, and actually more because I don't like all, I don't like, the, I want the, uh, a, a combat cut right here so that it can be grabbed. And then on the back, like I say, we're going to have to extend that, but that doesn't really take much imagination there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and, and actually we may, we may have enough holster here, but I'm going to go around real fast and I'm going to, uh, tidy up the profile, shorten this, and then uh, what I'll probably do, <coughs> or usually, is uh, I make a, um, another pattern by tracing this one after all the alterations. Otherwise, it's just confusing to my eye to sit there and look at all the, all the lines and everything. But anyway, I wanted you to see, like I said, before I just came back with something that looked like a holster, I wanted you to see it wasn't a, a magic trick or something where I just where I turned the camera off, threw this out of the way, and pulled up one I'd, I'd done an hour earlier. So anyway, I'll be right back with you. I'm going to uh, probably, my guess is trim at least an inch off of that. In doing so, a lot of times I, I get rid of the convex on the bottoms of the holsters. On a longer holster, I think it looks odd to be straight, but on a shorter holster, I kind of like a straighter look here. So I'll probably just round this off, bring this down straight, and then across here. I have a, a really strange tool, which is the top of a Zippo cigarette lighter. As you can see, these corners, um, that's what I actually trace most of my corners with. I, I really like the, uh, again, I, I don't know if you can see that or not. It, it's not really easy to see the viewfinder, but uh, those corners work out just about perfect for me for the shape. And uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this off, <clears throat> make a few lines, shorten this up. Uh, the way that I'll do that, is with the holster laid out, I'll determine. Yeah, I see you see it. I'll determine how deep I want the gun to lay. And as you can see, um, allowing just a little bit of overage for the thickness of the leather, um, we're going to have quite a bit of shortening there. So uh, I'll go ahead and get that done, tidy up this edge. I'll be right back with you. But we're actually just a few minutes from having a holster here pattern. And then uh, I'll probably make a second video with the pattern uh, showing the leather, just because I think there's a 10-minute limit on uh, eBay, and I'm probably already, or I'm sorry, on YouTube, and I'm probably already getting close to it. So let me tidy this up, and then, like I say, when I actually start doing the leather work, I'll uh, I'll probably just make it a part two to this this video. I'm back. All right. Now I've uh, tidied this up into what I think is a little more of a, of a good looking holster. Um, as you can see, I've kind of went, I went away from the convex here just because with a shorter holster like this, I really don't think it's necessary. Um, on the back, I still, like I say, I'm going to have to extend my, my uh, belt flap down just a little bit. I think I might also narrow it up just a little so that when the holster is uh, formed together that it's not trying to roll around here. Um, the next step is I'm going to lay this out on, a, on another piece of paper. I usually, uh, I usually use the red side and white side paper for this just to keep me from getting confused, but <coughs> that's not necessary. If you don't do that, if I were you though, I think I would write finish side, inside, or something on it. Like I say, I normally use the uh, red side as my outside, so that's probably what I will do. I'm going to go ahead at, at that point and make a little bit of trim adjustments right here. As you can see, I missed my, my ink line. I, well, actually, you probably can't see that, but it needs to cut in just a little bit to make this fold just a little better. Again, I'll probably use this my trusty Zippo can here, and actually it doesn't look like it's that much too wide. I'll probably bring it on out about that far, about, I usually use about one full Zippo lid. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it has just worked out perfect for me, and I'm sure you can find something of your own to use. But I use uh, one full lid like this uh, for my flap, 
so that when I fold it back over, I've got enough room to make my stitch and at the same time um, have plenty of room for a good wide inch and a half or two inch wide belt. I also, uh, when I do my final cut, I'll actually use the sander just like I was finishing the leather and I'll go around and gently sand this down. The more work that you can do on the pattern, I have found out, by far the less work you have to do later with the leather. I used to just really slop out my patterns. I mean, if you think this looks bad, uh, two years ago, my patterns, they look like stick figures drawn by, well, no, I, I won't even insult kindergarten kids. They draw better than I do. Um, but they looked horrible and it left me doing so much work at the end with the sander and the razor knives trying to get them. So now I've found that the more you do when you start, by far the better off you are when you finish. So I'm going to shut this down. Uh, is this going to take me a while? I'll actually have to be a little more careful with this one on the drawing. It'll take me 10 or 15 minutes. And what I'm going to do is retrace this over onto a piece of my, uh, my final red and white uh, finish paper. And then uh, I'll bring that back on. I'll show you what the final pattern looks like. And uh, then I'm going to, I believe, start another series and call it a, a part two, and we'll actually get into the leather work. I, I know there's probably a lot of you still sitting there watching this thinking this guy's a nut. This is never gonna look like a holster, but it really will. Uh, here's my, uh, I don't know if you noticed or not, but down here's my, my Zippo corners. You can see I, I use that as my corner. I use it most places. I used to put a uh, round corner here and sew the bottoms of a lot of my holsters. I found that it's a lot easier and the holster looks better just to leave it open. So you don't want to, anything to cut on the front because when it's, when it's round, you actually want it level all the way around the bottom, not have an addition in it. But anyway, I'll be back with you pretty soon. I'm going to make a final pattern for this. And then one last real quick clip on this set. And then, like I said, we'll go into some leather. Thanks.